What's going on, movie lovers? Welcome to Apocalypse Movie News, the podcast where we break down the biggest movie news stories throughout the week. I'm your host, Jacob Bartley, and I'm joined with my first panelist, Gio Ramos. What's up, man? Uh, good. I'd be doing a lot better if I knew exactly when Black Adam and Shazam were taking place in the DC timeline, uh, but nevertheless, I'm here and I'm excited. Let's go. I can guarantee you that one day we will find out. I, oh, that's, yeah. that's a I very put money, interesting theory. I put money on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also joined by Jake Berlin. What's uh, going on, Jake? Not much, man. I'm glad to be talking movies with the three of us for the first time in a little bit. So. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's hard to get together, but we're here. All right, well, let's jump into our first topic. This week involved quite a bit of anticipation for for us fans as it was announced early on that a new and final trailer for Logan would finally be released. Directed by James Mangold, Logan is loosely based on the famous Old Man Logan storyline as the film is set in 2029 and follows a weary, beat-down Logan who's caring for an old, ailing Professor X in a hideout on the Mexican border. But when a young mutant who is being pursued by dark forces arrives, Logan Logan's attempt to hide from the world and his legacy are put to the test. Starring Hugh, starring Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Daphne Keene, and Boyd Holbrook, Logan slices its way into theaters on March 3rd. Nice. Jake, how did you like this trailer, man? Uh, it's it's awesome. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, great action. You know, I think that you know that we did the news bit the other day when the trailer came out, but it just kind of focuses on X23, and it's a really cool um, way to kind of give a second trailer and... Uh, yeah, I mean, she just shined in the trailer. We weren't really expecting to see her in the trailer um, that much anyways with the claws and everything, but I think that, uh, you know, having her in the trailer and then showing kind of a, a, a father-figured Wolverine was very, very interesting. You know, really kind of the, cool. The uh, evolution that he's, ta- he's taken through these movies. Um, you know, Professor X, I don't know if you guys saw the trailer, but he dropped an F-bomb at the end of one of the trailers, which is really cool. I haven't seen that Patrick trailer. Stewart? Yeah, which is really cool. So uh, you can tell just from these trailers that this is going to be a completely different kind of um, X-Men movie, obviously. Um, I don't know how I feel about the whole X-Men comic thing that we had talked about, um, but everything else looks great. I think the villains look awesome. Um, you know, I think that they're playing around with this really cool. It's set so far in the future that they don't have to deal with anything, which is really cool. Um, and obviously the possibilities afterwards with X-23 and so on, um, you know, just it gets you intrigued. So it's a great trailer. Gio? Yeah, uh, I really love this trailer. Uh, you, it's, uh, you know, um, Jake, you mentioned the, the father figure. And I thought one of the best things about the original X-Men trilogy was uh, the relationship between Logan and Rogue and how he was kind of that father figure uh, to her. And in this one, it looks like it's going to be uh, more of that. Um, X-23, gosh, she is such a badass. She sold me, like, the, the part where she, uh, she's just sitting on the, on the, on the table inside the, the room, you know, minding her business, and then the guy brings out the handcuffs, and then it it cuts back to out, She looks at him like, are you serious? Like, what are you, uh, what are you gonna do? Holbrook is like, no. Yeah, well, that's, that's the interesting, because we had talked, like, when he, (laughs) when he first says, I got that feeling of, you know, they're taking her as a wild animal. Yeah. Like, she's almost this untrained, you know, she's obviously the clone of Wolverine, but she's very much a wild animal who just got uncaged right. and happened to find Wolverine. Yeah, so. yeah, it's just, uh, it's one of those, uh, you know, uh, life finds a way, match made in heaven, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah. Match made, yeah. So, uh, overall, I thought it was really great, um, you know, it signified, it made me feel a lot, you know, better about having it so high in my most anticipated um, and I just, I can't wait, man. This, this movie's gonna be great. I love this trailer almost as much as the first one for different reasons. They're, they're very different trailers, and I I did not expect that we were gonna get full out X-23 in this movie. I thought it was just gonna be the girl, and like she, she doesn't really know that she has powers or anything like that, but nope, she knows, mm-hmm. and she's gonna be using them. And I'm glad because now that I'm thinking about it, if it is Hugh Jackman's last like full Wolverine film, I'm, I think we're gonna see him again like as Wolverine, but not in a Wolverine mm-hmm. film. I would love to see them going into battle together, and that's what it looks like. We're going to see them both in berserker mode in that fight in the forest when she jumps off of his shoulder. Oh, yeah. So awesome. And I do like the comics theme because if you think about this, if it's in 2029 and the the first X-Men takes place in 2000, like the X-Men in this world have been a long, around for a long time, and they're almost kind of like a myth in a way. Mm-hmm. And... They're, they're this thing that happened so long ago and kids were probably so like amazed by the thought of the X-Men so I I do like the fact that they're in there and I talked to you about this Jake when we did our 
trailer reaction review um, how she in the in the comic book you see the Wolverine classic suit and X-23 eventually takes up a suit like that in the mm -hmm. comics what if this X-23 goes on to make a similar yellow type suit based on her reading Wolverine in the comics I think that'll be really awesome a way for us to finally get that suit in some type of iteration so I really love this trailer and I might have loved this next trailer even more. So while Thursday seemed like the day for a new Logan trailer, Lionsgate pulled a fast one and unexpectedly dropped a new trailer for the upcoming big screen adaptation of Power Rangers. Fans of the property were hoping to see everything the lore of Power Rangers is and they definitely got exactly that. Directed by Dean Israelite and starring Dakar Montgomery, Naomi Scott, Elizabeth Banks, Bill Hader, and Brian Cranston, Power Rangers arrives on March 24th so I'll just go ahead and say it. This is everything I wanted to see from this movie, or from this trailer. I don't want to see any more trailers. They don't need to release another trailer. This movie comes out in less than two months. Just keep it at that. We're good. Um, it has everything that I was worried about, the putties, uh, the suits, the zords. <laughs> all that looks great. Not sure about Zordon yet. I'm going to have to see it in the movie. It looks kind of weird. I kind of wish they stuck to like some type of tube instead of like his face coming out of the wall in a way. I don't know what that is, but one of the coolest things in it is the spaceship, how it's an underground spaceship. Like that makes sense. Like maybe they crashed on earth a long time ago and they're just on this ship because before they're just in this building and I'm like, where did this building come from? It's wide out in the open. Like how, like where did, how did they build this? So the spaceship thing makes sense. And just seeing the zords in action and my one of my favorite shots is when the the saber tooth tiger jumps onto goldar and like i don't know i i'm so excited for this movie and this trailer brought it back to one of my i mean it was my number five most anticipated and now it's back at number two right after star wars episode eight Jesus. so i am so excited uh geo i'm curious to hear what you thought i haven't talked to you about the trailer yet how did you like it yeah um you know uh I, I'm actually legit excited about this, you know. Um, That's cool. I, uh, I was a little bit worried about, you know, how much they would show and whether or not, you know, like how cheesy would they go. I don't know if cheesy is the, cheesy is the right word, but how, how much they, they would adapt from the TV yeah, exactly. show. You know, you mentioned the putties. Yeah. Uh, but everything looked surprisingly good. You know, mm -hmm. the, the Zord, you know, we got a little taste of it at the end. Uh, we know... You know, com coming off of a Pacific Rim and all that, like the technology doesn't the Megazord look better than the toy that came out? Remember oh, when the toy better. came out? Yeah. The toy looked like yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, the so. toy looked like crap. Um, and I'll say that the the comedy it was funny, but uh, there was some cheese to it. The suits look great. Um, Alpha, you know, we'll wait and see. I, I like the way he sounds. I'll say oh, that. Oh yeah, it's, it's Bill Hader. Yeah. And um, it, it, it remains to be seen just uh, how good this can actually be. You know, I hope it's good, uh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm crossing my good. fingers, Jake. Yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it's a really really fun trailer, and um, I don't think it's as uh, great as it probably could have been because there are a few things here and there, you know, that like the whole Goldar thing. I think and, for as an art of a trailer, the first one was better. Yeah, but this one just. Gave people well, like it, me it, it everything did, I wanted to see. It did do a good job. You know, the first 30 seconds or so kind of recap what we learned in the first one. Yeah, exactly. And then it kind of bolt, you know, bolted into a whole bunch of new stuff. But um, it's it looks like a lot of fun. And it kind of washes away of the, the bad taste of like, oh, is this going to be super cheesy? Yeah. It doesn't definitely. look cheesy at all. Yeah. I mean, the putties, they look awesome. Um, you know, it kind of looks like they kind of just adapt from anything on the ground, whether it's a car, vending machine, concrete, whatever it is. Um there's a whole bunch of theories going around, obviously, about Rita Repulsa being the, the first Green Ranger. I think that would make sense. There's also a new one going around, the, the people who have dissected the trailer saying that she could possibly be the Yellow Ranger's mom, and Rita took over her body. Because they kind of hear Elizabeth Banks' voice when they say, pee in the cup or whatever. I guess people are saying that's Elizabeth Banks' voice, oh, which might okay. be interesting. And that's... I mean, she attacks her in her bedroom. Exactly. So, I mean, that's a possibility. Um, but no, as far as the trailer goes, it's a lot of fun. The action looks cool. It doesn't look super cheesy. I really like Dean Israelite as a director. I like Project Almanac. Me too. That's what that's what gives me hope. It was a lot of fun. It, he really knows how to capture this like kind of tone and world. The humor was really great too. The whole glowing, you know, I'm black thing, and then no, you're not. Um, <laughs> you know, there was a whole bunch of other stuff in there. It's really cool. So no, I'm I'm all on board for Power Rangers right now. If it doesn't succeed, it doesn't succeed. But right now, 
I'm pro- I'm, look- I'm looking forward to it. So. I just want it to be good. I want. Yeah. I just if people walk out like you know what that was pretty good, I'll be happy. Like if it's good enough to where say I'm looking forward to a sequel, that's all it needs to do. If it's like Assassin's Creed bad, I'm gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> die. All right. So all right. So moving on. Fans had hoped that Alan Taylor's 2015 Terminator Genesis was the franchise reboot that we've been wanting for years, but that wasn't the case. While it wasn't a complete bomb by rating. The movie unfortunately made little to no money here in the States, making it difficult to move forward with a sequel. Since then, we have yet to hear anything on the franchise's state until now. Deadline is reporting that once James Cameron, who created the franchise decades ago, is planning on rebooting the franchise when he regains the movie rights in 2019. The report doesn't clarify whether it will be a complete reboot or a continuation from Cameron's second film, but Deadline does say that Cameron isn't looking to direct. Instead, he is he has his eye on Deadpool director Tim Miller to helm the project. No other details have been, real, been revealed at this point, but with the Terminator being such a big name, keep an eye out here on Apocflix for anything that's released. All right, Jake, so you heard about this news. came out a little late yesterday. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about it? It's I like the news, and you know, the Terminator franchise is one of the... Um, biggest and most popular and just greatest action franchises of all time. Oh, the first uh, two keeping in, the, pretty much keeping in mind just the first two, um, which James Cram- Cameron, you know, that those are his his films. Yeah. Um, he's the creator of this universe, and I think that having him um, kind of be involved more, it seemed like he was involved a little bit with Genesis, but he can only do so much as a producer. Um, Having the rights revert back to him is a very exciting thing because of those first two films and what he can do. Uh, whether it's a, a complete reboot or possibly even a sequel to T2, um, I'm more interested in finding out what's going to go on there. But uh, the choice of Tim Miller directing is very, very exciting too. Um, you know, he's he's known for Deadpool, obviously. He's also known for his visual effects work. Um, he's a great director. He captures stuff really well. The action in Deadpool is awesome. Uh, what he can do with uh, a Terminator franchise is it can be really, really interesting. Um, I kind of hope that they go the route of taking away the Arnold character and just doing something completely new. Um, but you know, it's exciting news, and it doesn't. It's not going to happen for a few more years. But this could eventually turn the Terminator franchise around after three bad films. So, Gio. Yeah, as much as I liked. Uh... Deadpool and what Tim Miller, you know, did for that movie. I, I'm just not excited about this, man. Like, you know, James Cameron talked a lot. He talked up Terminator uh, Genesis. He <laughs> he said uh, to me, "This is officially the third movie," and now he's saying, you know, this might be a continuation of the second movie. Well, what what is it? Um, because, you know, you talked up Genesis, and now you're just. I just I can't take anything you say about this franchise seriously because of what you said earlier. Um, you know, so many directors have tried. You know, uh, I don't know who directed Terminator Three. It wasn't Cameron, uh, and then Salvation, and then uh, Alan Taylor on uh, Genesis. You know, it's just you know I heard the the Sarah the Sarah Connor Chronicles, Chronicles was good. good. Yeah. It was I've, a TV show. Yeah, I've, I've, I heard that was good. I've heard similar things, but I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe if Cameron's writing the script, I'd have more, you know, confidence in it. But so many directors have tried, and it, it looks like it feels like Cameron is the only uh, guy who can, you know, direct these movies. Um, I mean, I'm I wouldn't have Tim Miller as my first choice. Give me a Dennis Villeneuve. Give me a. Even a Neil Blomkamp, I know you don't like him, but oh, you know, Ugh. like I, I love what he's done in the sci-fi genre, but I don't know. I just I'm hes- hesitant. I like that the rights are going back to Cameron um, because uh, who who owned it? Who owns it? Fox. It was Skydance and Paramount. They don't know Paramount, what to. Yeah. They don't know. They don't even know what to do with the GI Joe franchise. Like these, these guys have no clue. Transformers, bro. Oh god. <laughs> uh, but I mean, give me a few years. Give me more developments. Signed Dwayne Johnson to play the new T. Oh, no, no, That's no, obvious. No. no, no Who's no. rather have Dave Bautista? Yes. No. No. I, I, would, I would rather have Dave Bautista over Dwayne Johnson. No. Why, why does it have to be that? Why, why do we keep going back to the same thing where a new Terminator comes you have to save the world? Why can't you play, do a movie where the Terminators have already taken over? That like Planet of the something, Apes, something but completely Terminator. Why well, does no, it have no, to be no. the same thing over and over again? No, I'm not. I'm not saying the he same thing. He never said that. I'm he not said the same thing over and over. There, again. no matter what, there's going to be a main Terminator character. So maybe, maybe that's the case, and he's working with the humans to, to you know, to yeah, rebel cast, against the cast, robots. Uh, Tom Hardy to play John Carter. That'd be cool. All right. John Carter? 
not John Carter, uh, John. Uh, what, I forget, his name. I forget his name. Yeah, uh, yeah, John. John let's Carter. reboot John, John Carter with Tom Hardy. John I'm Carter, down for yeah. that. That actually might be. I'm down cool. for that. <laughs> Anyways, Gio, I think you're crazy. I think Tim Miller is a great choice. If yeah. if he gets him to do this, I think that's a great choice. I think I want something fresh and new with the Terminator franchise, and I I don't think Tim Miller's a one trick pony. I don't think Deadpool's oh, no. the only no. thing that he's capable of, and I think. Cameron does not have time to direct one of these. He's he all in the Avatar, Avatar world. Films. He's going to oversee it and be a part of it. And I guarantee you he's going to work with whoever he did. If he does get to Miller, he's going to work with him. He's and probably going to write it. Yeah, and I w- they'll probably write it together. Yeah. I guarantee you they'll both write it together. And then Tim Miller will direct. And I'm totally fine with that. I would rather have that than James Cameron direct it. I, I don't think James Cameron... Yes, You'd absolutely. You'd rather have Tim Miller than James Cameron. Absolutely. If, James, if, you, if you had to pick James Cameron to direct another one... Instead of Avatar Five, you <laughs> he wouldn't he he wouldn't put his full heart into it. He wouldn't care that much. Okay. I, I think It'd have to be he's a really all good story, into yeah. Avatar right now. So I think getting someone like Tim Miller who did Deadpool, and you know how much I love Deadpool, to do this mm-hmm. is would be amazing. And a lot of people complain, well, we don't need another Terminator. No matter Terminator is one of the most recognizable movie franchise names out there. No matter what, they're going to keep making Terminator films. Mm -hmm. And to get a guy like Tim Miller attached, like Alan Taylor, I know he directed Game of Thrones episode, but then he did Thor to Dark World, which is, in my opinion, one of the worst Marvel films. Not that it's bad. None of the Marvel movies are bad. Maybe Iron Man 2, but I think uh, Thor the Dark World is one of the lesser Marvel films. So coming off of that, I I didn't have much hope for him for for Terminator, the last Terminator that came out, Genesis. Mm So I think with Tim Miller coming off Deadpool, I think this is a great choice. Give me Zack Snyder to direct. Terminator. No, thank you. Yeah. All right, moving on. To this point, we've heard and no close to nothing on Steven Spielberg's next project, Ready Player One. We obviously have the book to go off of, but it's Spielberg. But it's Spielberg. What kind of flair will he add? Young star of the film, Ty Sheridan, recently, recently spoke with Clatter, and during the interview, Sheridan revealed some new details about the film, saying that, 60% of the film takes place in this virtual video game and 40% takes place in the real world. As well as that, the sequences that take place in the video game virtual reality known as the Oasis will be shot using used motion capture. Sheridan goes on to give a bit of backstory on his character, saying that he's a loser in the real world but becomes famous inside the game after becoming the first to find the first key to the so-called Easter egg. Ready Player One has a set March 30th, 2018 release date and features a fantastic supporting cast of Olivia Cook, Ben Mendelsohn, Simon Pegg, TJ Miller, and Mark Rylance. Jake, I know you haven't read the book, but how does the film sound to you so far, so far after Sheridan's comments? Uh, it sounds awesome. I know that the book is highly loved by a lot of people. Um, when this was announced and Spielberg was going to Spielberg was going to direct it, uh, people went you know crazy. Uh, it sounds awesome. It kind of gives me that uh, the movie The Gamer with uh, Gerard Butler, kind of that vibe. A little bit different, you know, virtual reality. Their bodies are in there, not just playing a game or whatever. But um, yeah, no, I like. I really like Ty Sheridan as an, a, an actor too. You know, obviously he was the n- young Cyclops in X Men Apocalypse. He did. Uh, I think he was in Mud uh, with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to watch that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in that. He's done a few more too. He was in that uh, zombie, zombie movie. Yeah. I heard that's fun. It Scouts. was pretty. It was pretty fun. Yeah, Scout's Scout Guide to Zombie yeah. Apocalypse yeah. or whatever. But um, I like that most of it's going to take place in the Oasis. I don't want a whole another Assassin's Creed happening where it kind of jumps back and forth, <laughs> and most of it takes place in present day. We want it to take place in past or whatever. Um, the story interests me. The whole Easter egg. There's three keys to find this prize. Um, I also like that uh, he's a kind of a loser in real life, and this game kind of you know bolts him into stardom or um, this popularity, as you will. And mm-hmm. um, it's going to be interesting to see Ty Sheridan play that kind of character with Spielberg, um, and then everyone around him. Obviously, you have like Benny Mendelsohn as the bad guy, Mark Rylance. Mark Rylance as the guy who created the game. Mm-hmm. Geo's favorite uh, actor. Yeah. So uh, everything's go for Ready Player One. It sounds awesome. I'm really looking forward to see uh, what Spielberg throws in there as far as. Um, pop culture ties because uh, that's a big thing in the book apparently yeah um, so that'll be a interesting but films, yeah. yeah everything sounds good for Ready Player One I'm excited for this and I love hearing this because that's what that's the intrigue of the movie the virtual world the Oasis I don't want to see the opposite 60 in the real world 40 in the Oasis I wouldn't mind 80 in the Oasis you know but I guess the real world's reaction to what's yeah. going on in the Oasis is a big part of it too I'm stuck because I kind of want to 
do the audiobook for Ready Player One before the movie comes out. At the same time, I just want, I kind of want to go in fresh with the movie. So I've been really thinking about that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I might do it vice versa. Who knows? But I really like Ty Sheridan. I, he, he's part of the reason why I don't want them to reboot the X-Men franchise because yeah. Cyclops is one of my favorite comic book characters. And I feel comfortable with him being our young Cyclops and having him grow and become, you know, the Scott that we know later on in the future. So, I, I like him as the lead. Spielberg is great. Even like Spielberg's mediocre movies, I still really enjoy them. Like I really like Bridge of Spies. I really liked the BFG earlier last year. To see it. Last year, it's, to see it. it's a good movie. It's it's a fun family film and it, it's pretty good. And uh, Mark Rylance is great in both. Uh huh. Geo. <laughs> so. Um, Wait, you don't like Mark Rylance? He's, he's mad because he's he stole he, an Oscar from oh, so Stallone. 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 But no, Stallone's I think Oscar. Mark Ruffalo should have won that year for Spotlight, yeah. if you ask me. Uh, but awesome. Gio, how do you feel about Sheridan's comments and Ready Player One? I buy his comments. You know, I love that he's excited. He should be excited. I mean, this is Steven Spielberg. We've been waiting for uh, him to do a blockbuster like this. You know, it's great having uh, all of his smaller films or the BFG, uh, Lincoln, and all that stuff. But... We haven't seen a blockbuster from Spielberg, I think, since War of Worlds, right? Tom Cruise? Uh, yeah, that believe, might have been the last I one. I believe that's the last one. So this has been a long time coming. And, you know, popular video, uh, um, the book, and, uh, you know, so much that it attracted, you know, Peter Jackson, uh, Christopher Nolan, all these big names. So uh, this, I've been following this project closely. I love that we're going to get a lot of the uh, Oasis because that's the exciting part once you're in there. You know, the adventure, the uh, the references like you mentioned, uh, it's all going to be great. I, I can't wait. And I was thinking of a different movie. I was thinking of uh, Spy Kids 3D. You know, when the kids go oh, in there. Yeah. Yeah, like, I haven't seen that in like a very You know what it time. reminds me of, and this is going to sound weird at first, but it reminds me of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in a way to where how they get the golden tickets and then the kids become famous and like everything and so like there's three keys to the there's three keys egg. and you find all three like, then you get the ultimate prize. oh you have to find all three you have to find all three oh, okay i thought like three different kids no yeah you just key. find all okay three. that's why it kind of reminded but me of willy wonka but nobody has nobody has ever found the first key and he's the first one to find it okay yeah. so you so, have to find the first key to even have a chance exactly yeah okay Man, with still all, kind of little willy wonka in there yeah i mean with all due respect like mark ryan's you know you're, you're great um but i would have loved if that rumor about Gene Wilder, you know, mm. rest in peace, if he would have played the uh, creator or what's, what's the name? What's the name? I, oh, it's, was it's that rumor? Yeah, that was, was a rumor. rumor Speaking of Willy Wonka, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, moving on to a topic we haven't talked about today Power Rangers. When it was announced <laughs> that Brian Cranston was brought on board to play Zordon in the big screen adaptation of Power Rangers, it wasn't only a huge plus, but a nice callback for longtime fans as Cranston has been involved in the world of Rangers for a long time. Now that we finally got our first look at the Rangers mentor in the latest trailer, Cranston is finally talking about his important character. While speaking with IGN, Cranston called Zordon a frustrated mentor and that some of the Rangers are not taking this seriously, the responsibility that has been placed upon them or that they have chose, been chosen for. In a separate interview with the AV Club, the interview turned toward the subject of the film itself and Cranston offered up his thoughts. I've seen a lot of it because I'm doing ADR on it and it's impressive. Dean Israelite really has a nice touch. As big and as powerful as Power Rangers could be, he has a nice touch to keep it grounded and real. I think it's going to turn some heads. I really do. So again, I'll talk about this. Uh, no matter what project it is, whoever's part of it, actor, writer, director, producer, they're always going to praise it. Like. They're never going to say, you know what, it looks kind of shitty, but you know, I'm still glad I'm getting paid. They're, they're going to praise right. it, but <laughs> there's certain guys you can tell are genuine. And I believe Brian Cran Cranston is a genuine guy, and I believe in that he believes that this is going to be uh, you know, something cool. And I like his, his, uh, his comments on Zordon. It makes sense because even – I said this in my trailer review of, of the trailer, but like in the very first episode of Power Rangers – um, the Pink Ranger's like, oh, yeah, right, this is stupid. And they have her doing that in the movie trailer. So, like, it's pretty cool how uh, – and I know Dean Israel is a huge Power Rangers fan, so he probably knows that he's sticking to, his, to it as much as you can. And, yeah, I, I love the comments uh, about the movie in general. I, I think – I believe him when he says that he is looking forward to it. So, Gio? Well, of course Zordon's going to be frustrated. His only um, 
assistant is a little uh, Alpha, Alpha, Alpha 5 guy. Bill Hader, dude. Bill Hader, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I buy his comments. Look, uh, this uh, tone of Power Rangers, it reminded us a lot of Chronicle. You know, how that... Especially that first trailer. Grounded, yeah. you know, it, it, it went a serious route. But um, as we see with this latest trailer, it still had that fun, you know, that cheese a little bit of the of the TV show. Um, so I, his comments make uh, all the sense in the world. And, um, you know, the fact that Cranston signed on to do something like this just speaks a lot about how um, Dean's, Dean, Dean Israelite's uh, vision for Power Rangers. Sorry. All right. I'm not good with not names. laughing at you. Yeah, you I'm are. At, I'm laughing at Dean here. Sure. Oh <laughs> okay. my god. Uh, but anyways, I buy the comments. It, it's, it makes sense, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. All yeah. right, Dean. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a resident Dean here. Um, I buy the comments too. You know, I think that uh, his first comments about um, you know the he's frustrated that the Rangers aren't taking it as serious. It makes sense. Um, you know, they're not going to learn it right away. They're not going to be able to put on the suits and be like. Oh, I'm the best superhero on the planet. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're gonna get frustrated, and it's gonna frustrate Zordon because Zordon wants them to be the best thing possible, um, you know. And he's he's the mentor, so he wants to get the best out of them. And at first, that's not gonna happen, you know. I kind of have the same situation as a coach. Uh, I coach baseball players, so uh, I, I kind of feel where Zordon's coming from. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, relatable. Uh, he's relatable to me. So, um, but as far as comments about the film. Um, I definitely buy it, buy it. You know, like Jacob had said, you know, everybody's going to praise the movie that's coming out because it's pro it's more than likely in their contract and, you know, they're going to have to say something good about it. Um, but Brian Cranston's a guy that's not, you know, he doesn't fool around. You know, he the biggest movie we've seen him in recently is Godzilla and he was in it for maybe 30 minutes. But he can do anything he wants it, right now. Exactly. He's he And he chooses, he chooses these projects that aren't big, so... He knows what to look for in a movie. And, and he so, decided to do this, which exactly. is really cool. Yeah, and, and the fact that uh, he also had previous ties to it. You know, he, he had ties in a TV show. He used show to voice movies. some of the monsters. Yeah, and I, didn't, I had no uh, idea. So that's kind of cool he's coming back to do that. Um, I think that his comments are true. I think they're honest. Uh, maybe the, it's not going to be the best movie of the year. But it's going to be something that you know is going to surprise us. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be cool. There's going to be really cool new things for Power Ranger fans to look forward to in the future. Um, because it is on a big screen, it's not a TV show. They have bigger limits now. Mm -hmm. They have a higher ceiling than a TV show did. Um, so that's what makes it exciting. And Brian Cranston the comments only backed it up. Yeah, I will be crossing my fingers for the next two months. <laughs> All right, well, moving on to our take one, leave one segment where we uh, take two or more topics, compare them, and decide which one we take, which one we leave. So our first match of the show includes a pair of new trailers from this week. First up is Colossal, which stars Anna Hathaway as a woman who discovers that the monster mayhem going on outside her window is somehow connected to the mental breakdown she's suffering from. The movie, the movie also stars Jason Sudeikis, Dan Stevens, and Tim Blake Nelson and hits theaters on April 7th, 2017. The second trailer is for Netflix's upcoming sci-fi The Discovery. Described as a love story set one year after the existence of the afterlife is is scientifically verified. The Discovery stars Jason Siegel, Rooney Mara, Jesse Plemons, Riley Keough, Keo. Keo, and Robert Redford, and is released on March 31st, 2017. All right, Jake, uh, you saw these two trailers. They're both good. So which one are you taking? Which one are you leaving? They both have a ton of mystery around them. Like yes. they, the teasers didn't reveal close to anything. And especially with the discovery, you would have had no idea what the movie's about All right. if you watched that teaser trailer without looking at a synopsis or anything. Um, yeah, no, they're very. They're both very interesting movies. The theories are really cool behind them, especially the discovery. Um, but I'm gonna take Colossal just because nice. I'm more intrigued with <laughs> Anne Hathaway controlling a big giant fighting monster. And, you know, the kind of comedy side of it, too, in the trailer was really fun. You have Jason Sudeikis in there. Um, you also throw Dan Stevens in there, who's starring in the Legion TV show. Uh, he's Beast in Beauty and the yeah. Beast. Uh, I like seeing him pop up a little bit more because he was fantastic in The Guest a few years I ago. I still need to watch that. So great. Um, but, no, there's just – I'm a little bit more interested in the Colossal. It sounds a lot of fun. The buzz around it, too, is actually really good. You told me – um, that someone, you know, Collider yeah, said it's really, Clark really Wolf from good. Collider saw it at some festival, and she said it was great. Yeah, which is which is always a good sign. So, um, But nothing against the Discovery. I mean, Netflix has been stepping their game up huge lately, um, and that movie definitely has some really cool things around it. But I'm going to take Colossal just because of the intrigue factor. All right, so this is what sucks about Take One, Leave One. I love both of yeah. these trailers and both of these concepts. And strictly because I only saw a little bit of Colossal, um, 
and it was a teaser and it was a great teaser, I'm going to take the discovery because even without knowing the synopsis, just watching that trailer, I was Still, really intrigued. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. And I, I'm a huge Jason Segel fan. He's one of my favorite comedic actors. And this is not a comedy no. movie. This is a serious – and it's kind of touchy because it's about – it's dealing with suicide and stuff like that in the afterlife. I'm so intrigued with that concept in general, so – I'm already hooked, but watching that trailer with these two actors and Robert Redford in there, that's awesome. And Netflix, Netflix is killing it. I was just talking to you guys about the OA. Great show, by the way. Um, I, so I take the discovery for those reasons, but Colossal looks awesome too. Yeah, this is a toss-up for me. I, I, this is one of the hardest uh, ones we've done. Both both full trailers are going to be awesome whenever those come out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if we're going off trailers, I, I gotta go with Colossal. Um, you know, I'm just I'm so intrigued by this. You know, <laughs> when's when have we ever seen Anne Hathaway do a role like this? Honestly, yeah. like it's it's. Well, I remember her. when this movie was announced. They said, "Oh, Anne Hathaway in a monster movie," but it looks like such a different kind of monster movie. Like you saw the monster. It's dancing. so unique. It was dancing yeah. because and of her. it's like it's dealing. She plays an alcoholic, and like it's dealing with yeah. those type of things Mental too. Issues, and I guarantee yeah. you, there's. It's like some type of inner metaphor, like her, she's dealing with her inner demons, which are monsters for her and her, their alcoholism. And it's a, like a metaphor for the monster. Like it's going to be crazy. Yeah, like that, I, you know? I, I totally agree with you. And you know, the cast, both these movies have good cast, mm -hmm. man. But I mean, the cast for this one is uh, just as strong. And for me, what, what, what made me buy it was the end shot, you know, and watching that. Oh movie, yeah. When she's dancing. Yeah. yeah. It's like <laughs> dancing like, and then they look up, they're like, no. Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Both these movies are going to be great. Yeah, they both look awesome. Um, all right, so for our next one, it's either take two, leave one, or take one, leave two. Uh, either way you want to go about it because there's three, <laughs> there's three topics. Of them, yeah. So our final verses of the show includes the biggest release for this week with the first mm -hmm. being Split. The latest from the mind of M. Night Shyamalan, Split stars Anya Taylor-Joy as one of three girls taken captive by James McAvoy, whose character has 23 different personalities living within him. Next up is Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, directed by DJ Caruso. The best the comedy X, this year so far. The Triple X sequel <laughs> brings back Vin Diesel Xander for a new assignment after being left for dead. Return of Xander Cage also stars Donnie Yen, Ruby Rose, Tony Colletti, and Samuel L. Jackson, and... Ice Cube. Last but not least oh, is The yeah. Founder, which tells the story of Ray Kroc, a salesman who turned two brothers' innovative fast food stops into one of the biggest restaurant businesses in the world, McDonald's. The film stars Michael Keaton, Nick Offerman, John Carroll Lynch, Linda Cardellini, and Laura Dern. So I'll go ahead and start this off. So I've actually seen The Founder, and right in the next, in 30 minutes, I'll be watching Split. <laughs> and uh, in six months on Redbox, I'll be watching Triple X. Exactly. No, when it comes on Netflix or something. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, all right, so I saw The Founder. It's hard to compare a movie that you've seen to one you haven't seen. I've seen The Founder. I, I really enjoyed it. I actually loved it. It, it had some weaknesses, but I, I thought it was great for my personal likings. Like, it actually, like, it's a 2016 release, actually, and, like, I threw it into my rankings. It's, like, at number 14 right now. So it would have been an honorable mention for me if, nice. if I would have seen it before our nice. top movies of the year list. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so, and I, Split, I'm so excited for Split, I cannot wait, it was one of my most anticipated movies for this year, so I'm actually, I'm taking Split in the Founder and I'm leaving Triple X if I can do that, if, okay. if that's yeah, fair. Okay, no, take two, one, yeah, one. Take two, who says we have to take only one? Yeah, so, so um, uh, yeah. You're, you're seeing, you guys are seeing Split in about 30 minutes, what's funny is five minutes before you guys got here, I ended The Visit. Really? I finally watched oh. The Visit. Oh, whoa, what did yeah. you think? It was it was good. It was predictable because I knew what happened. I did you you had already known? I had already known what happened. Okay. Um, I didn't I didn't know the details yeah. of what happened, but I knew that what had happened yeah. happened. But that's crazy. That's Yeah. So yeah. um but yeah. with that said, I'm taking the founder. Okay. And uh, I'm looking forward to split just as much as you guys. I think it looks awesome. J uh, James James McAvoy? James yeah. McAvoy. Um, 20, 23 or 24 different personalities of one body. Like, I'm so excited to see that kind of per, that And performance. the 24th is about to emerge. That's yeah, what that's yeah. And then, um, and then you know, Anna Taylor-Joy, who was in The Witch. Yeah, she uh, was she's great the, in The Witch. The female lead. Uh, it's very interesting. You know, obviously, M. Night Shamhammer and his twist. It's always interesting what kind of uh, twist he has. He's kind of back on the rise after a very fall down, a very I'm far so down. I'm so happy fall. for him because yes. the visit got critical acclaim and mm -hmm. everyone loves Split. Yeah, so it's definitely exciting. Um, but there's something about Michael Keaton for me 
and Dude, I just he's so there, good. I don't know what it is like. There's Need for Speed's going on in the background right now with Muted, and I can just see Michael Keaton playing this character. I'm just like I'm he's so great. intrigued by whatever he does. Um, and so anything he's in, I'm just like locked in. I, I think see you'll it. like the founder. If did you like like the Social Network? Yeah. Did you like Steve Jobs? Yeah. It's, you'll like the founder. See, and I'm just I mean, and it looks like he's kind of this dark character who turns their back on people and everything. And it's so good. I'm definitely and Triple X like. I'm a huge fan of the original. I remember watching it with my dad when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, because we were kids when it came out. And it was out, like so, it was so much cool, fun. And know? I was big into dirt bike riding and the whole dirt bike riding scene and everything. And this just looks like a, a terrible parody. Like they took the Triple the, um, X character, Xander Cage, to a completely different way than what he is. He's like exploding out of a plane or something. Yeah, in the and it's just like, like they, they, did, they did what Xander Cage, they did the Xander Cage what they exactly did to Tyrese's character in Fast and Furious. They made him a comedy guy. Oh, Xander yeah. Cage isn't comedy. He's a serious dude who takes it like, yeah. he's he's kind of like this player extreme athlete. They yeah, did, in he's the not first movie, he's not busting he's, one line. Exactly. And stuff, so you know? that's what kind of turns me off on it. And I'm with you. I'll probably see it in six months on like on demand or something. Um, but I'm going to take the founder of all three of them, but Split is definitely one to look out for. So I'm not going to waste your time on this one. I'm taking Triple X. You know, really? This is, Man. this is exactly what January is all about. What are you guys uh, expecting? If this movie came out in July, then yes. <laughs> I would be like, what the hell is this? But this is January. This is what January is all about. This movie, I'm not going to take it any seriously. It's not going to win any awards or anything. Maybe a Razzie, who knows. But it's... It's dumb. It's fun. It has Donnie Yen coming off of uh, Rogue One. Boom. Tony Jaw. Man. Tony Jaw. Uh, where, where are these guys? Why aren't Samuel they getting Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Ice Cube. You know. It's He'll like, be in there for like five seconds. Yeah, but you know, it's like you could totally tell. Yeah. He's just in that one scene. <laughs> just to blow him up on that. Scene. Yeah. yeah. It's just, he just comes out of nowhere. They don't yeah. even explain it. Yeah, he just walks away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would have to have seen the franchise to know, you know, the, the significance of that. But uh, you know, I'm taking Triple X just because this is January, guys. Hey, it's a valid reason. That's a very it's valid reason. Well, I mean, if I, this was May, then obviously I kind of took the founder more than I took Split. So we each three took a different yeah, one, which yeah, is yeah. that's cool. If I was forced to choose one, I would take the founder because I already seen it and I loved it. I don't know if I'm going to love the visit or Split. split. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to wrap up Apocflix movie news for this week. I want to thank everyone for listening, and I want to thank these two for joining me. Geo, where can they find you online? You guys, can find me on Twitter at GeoRamos24. Check out ApocalypseMovies.com. We just put up uh, top movies of 2016. Yeah, that's big that's, right that's up. up. Yeah, yeah our right combined up. consensus list of our top 10 movies of the and year. And most anticipated 2017 will be up uh, probably by the end of this weekend. Hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully tomorrow. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get it up and we'll let you guys know. And Dean Jacob Berlin. Wow. Where can they find you? Yeah, the full name out there. Yeah. Nice. Bro, dude. It, it's... It's bad. Nice. I just found out that his real name is Dean. So if you didn't get the Dean Israelite joke earlier, Lord. Well, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at Qui Gon Jake, not Dean. Qui Gon Jake. Um, Podcastmovies dot com every day. Uh, this YouTube channel, doing all kinds of stuff. We're having a lot of fun here. So thank you for, for all the views and subscribes. And you can find me on Twitter at Jacob Barley underscore. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit that like button. We're doing new things. We did two trailer review commentary and reviews for Logan and Power Rangers. We're putting out news bits, just short videos, uh, like reporting on breaking news. And yeah, just please subscribe. We truly do appreciate it. Until next time, take care.